Alrighty. So uh, today, guys, I'm actually going to be showing you some games from my recent tournament. I actually won a tournament for the first time in a while, maybe ever, uh, last month in, here in California, the Golden State Open, uh, which was kind of a small open event, but there were a number of strong uh, strong players. There are some grandmasters, some IMs, and uh, a bunch of masters as well. And I'm basically just going to give you guys a bunch of like training positions uh, that I've taken from the tournament, ask you guys to find the best move. Some will be tactical, some maybe more positional. And um, yeah, we'll give you guys a chance to uh, maybe solve some of the critical moments. Um, so let's start with uh, the first position here. And we'll kind of go through a little bit of all the games, which I think were uh, pretty interesting. Um, all right, let me uh, yeah, put this in here. Okay, first position here is black to play. And I'll give you guys a timer. Oh, let me... Um, Privatize the chat. There we go. And I'll give you guys three minutes for this first one. Might give you more time in the future. If it's black to play, your job to come up with what you would do. Three minutes. Why close chat? Oh, so that people just send their answers to me privately. Okay, guys, so uh, time's up. First, let me ask, how do you evaluate the position here? So who is better and and why? Now that you've had three minutes to think about it. Yeah, it seems like black, uh, black is better. Right, now why is black better? Yeah, strong bishop. And we can say white has a lot of weaknesses in their position, right? Especially on the dark squares. Uh, okay, so a very natural idea here is bishop h6. Immediately going after this one and then trying to play uh, bishop f4. Problem with this one is knight d5. Yeah, it's hard to solve. And the complications there are very unclear. Uh, another idea is being suggested is g5. With the idea fg bishop e5. Which makes sense. Um, but then white goes queen g1. And uh, it's not exactly... Definitely black's position still looks great, but yeah, nothing exactly immediate there. I think we're just keeping our, our nice position. But we might not necessarily want to go g5. It does kind of trade off one of white's uh, weaknesses. Okay. So yeah, my thinking in this position was uh, fairly straightforward. Bishop c3, you know, I considered earlier here, I don't think we're getting as much. Uh, like rook takes c3. Did you want rook e1 there? Yeah, rook takes g3, rook takes f1, check, king h2, and then rook takes f4 at the end. Or, or something else. Rook f4, yeah. So of course white can also play b takes c3 and then, okay, again, black is much better there, but it's a question of whether we want to uh, give up the bishop. Um, in an end game, I mean, it's, it's a pawn up, but yeah, one pawn in a rook end game is not always... Uh, not always enough. Um, so takes takes rookie four. Yeah, that end, oh, sorry. Yeah, that yeah. End game looks very, very, very tough for what black to for 
tough luck to win, I think. Or, yeah, yeah. Tough to win, right? Just one pawn? I mean, very, like, also, like, just concrete things that look annoying, like a rook, rook to d3, maybe, at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what do you do? <laughs> um, we have a white rig d3? I'm just attacking the pawn, right? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I'm late. There's the pawn still in c7. Yeah, but maybe I'm like sorry. rook c3 I'm first. And then... yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Sure, sure. No, no, no worries. Yeah, yeah. Because but, the a um. Pawn strong, so. Yeah, I mean, my feeling is actually earlier I considered to go into a rook end game that looked very, very nice, but the thing is, I mean, you are giving up some flexibility along the way. Because right now we know black is better. We know, like, we have the strong bishop, active queen. But yeah, if we start training it off, we start kind of possibly giving away uh, our advantage little by little. Um, so, so it takes, takes rookie four, there's, uh, oh, so f5, rook f4, and then maybe not so, not so good for white. Yeah, so I'd probably go for that rook takes e3 line. All right, uh, a lot of you guys, I think, already, I think, came up with uh, a move that makes things um, pretty easy for black. Oh, the line after bishop c3, rook takes c3 was uh, rook e1. Rook g3, rook f1, king h2, rook takes f4. We were kind of uh, thinking about this in game. So, given that bishop h6, knight d5 is, uh, is quite annoying with threats of knight f6 check and uh, c pawn also hinking, uh, I decided just to make the yeah simple move c6 just to like stop this one idea from white. Now bishop h6 is a much more annoying threat, and white doesn't really have a lot of like active moves to make in the position. Yeah, we're still covering the e file. Uh, knight e2. I think someone mentioned black can always go queen e3 and deal with this one quite effectively because the knight just doesn't have a nice nice square from there. Um, and yeah, actually not a ton black needs to calculate to make this move. It's really just as uh, suppose like, oh, knight d5 is an annoying move. Let me stop it. And now white has no, well, no possible counterplay. Bishop h6 is coming. Uh, in the game, white play queen c4. And uh, let me actually ask you guys next question here. Black to play. I'll give you three minutes. What to do? Okay, guys, so uh, a lot of suggestions for bishop h6, which is now a lot stronger. If queen takes c6, then we have rook e1 check, and black is uh, giving mate there. Bishop takes f4, whoops. Um, so bishop h6, why well, probably play something like rook f1. And then we would need some kind of follow-up there for black. A few of you guys wanted rook e1 takes, bishop takes f4 in between move. But you have to be very, very careful, right? White can go rook e8 check there, king g7, and then king g1, for example. Or someone else found queen d4 check, queen g1. And okay, it's very easy for black to just end up down a rook. I know you guys only have three minutes in a game you would spend a lot more time. Uh, to calculate that, but yeah, of course, you have to be very, very uh, careful with these kinds of ideas. If you miss one thing, again, you're yeah down a rook and losing the game. Um, so, yeah, on this one, and uh, rook f1, I think a simple move here is like d5, and black is doing really, really well. On uh, the game, I just played d5 immediately because we have this uh, same idea again with rook to e1 check. So white's queen is uh, kind of kicked around. We also have d4 coming now if we want to uh, harass the knight. And uh, and yeah, now it's just uh, lost and the game was pretty much over after rook e1, take, take, king h2, bishop d4. And uh, yeah, very important that white doesn't have any useful checks, no way to get counterplay. Uh, black's threat is, of course, bishop g1, followed by bishop f2 and mate. So white has only only one move to continue the game, knight e2, but it doesn't really uh, prolong the game for very long. Black just takes and uh, is totally winning. 
Okay, well done, guys. Let's go to the next one. Actually, gonna be um, earlier moment, but from the from the same game. Okay, black to play, three minutes. Okay, okay. Well, well done, guys. Well done. Uh, yeah, queen takes b2, just wins immediately. <laughs> it's like game over. It's back rank. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you guys what happened. I actually missed it. That's how we got to the you know the eventual position. I played queen b6 here. White played h3, queen f2, etc. Um, not all of you guys found it. That's why I threw this one in here. Because during the game, actually, I just totally, I didn't, I didn't, you know, pause to look. I'll tell you guys what happened. Uh, previous position, king was on g1. White played king h1, which I thought was kind of a strange move because I was expecting white to play h3, and then the plan was to go queen b6 check, king h2, queen f2, and I'm like, okay, my position looks looks pretty nice there. Um, and then my opponent played king h1, and I was like, hmm, that's weird. And just kind of quickly play queen b6. You know, I had like, I don't know, 15 minutes or so at this point. <laughs> Not really stopping to look if, if there's uh, anything uh, better. A few of you guys missed it or suggested d5, which um, works, I guess, queen takes d5, queen takes b2. But d5 gives white a chance to, um, or I'm sorry, uh, knight takes d5, queen takes b2 was, was the idea. But d5, of course, gives white a chance to uh, avoid the threat altogether, like queen f1 or... Um, queen c6, something like that. Um, so yeah, we just, just this move right now wins on the spot. Now, Zoe was the only one to actually find white's best defense here, which is queen b5. And I wish I could say like, oh, this is why I, I rejected it. Um, but uh, yeah, there's actually a nice way for black to win. If you guys did not consider this yet, let me give you a chance here to try to figure it out. Black to play. Queen takes b5 is of course simple. Black has big advantage there, but there's a better way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, queen takes b1. Knight cannot take again because of rook e1 check. White goes queen takes b1, bishop takes c3, and then can't stop rook e1. Exactly. Very, very good. Um, okay, so that's just kind of a nice detail there. Let's go to the next one. So that's just a reminder, guys. You know, Always look for tactics. You never know when it's going to be a moment. Here I just was 100% in strategic mode, putting my pieces on good squares and just completely blew past this uh, moment. Okay, next one. This is white to play. Give you guys three minutes once again. White to move. Alrighty. And so, yeah, this is, uh, so this was my round two game. A lot of you guys suggested the trap move, right, for realizing your error, which is good that you figured out your mistake, but not good that you submitted a move, right, without fully, fully checking it. Um, so, yeah, rook takes c7 looks like an obvious move, and, and game is uh, just over, but in fact, black would have queen a4 here, which is a big, big problem keeping the attack on our queen and threatening actually mate in one with queen takes d1. Um, now a couple of you guys went further with like queen takes a6 here um, with this idea to take and go rook c6 uh, and then try to win this one. I don't think this works either. I think well, I can go like uh, queen a4 for example, but yeah, even better is queen d1 and then bishop h2, yeah. Um, now the problem is for you guys, this is like a puzzle. So you're like kind of expecting a solution. Uh, and so you're like, oh, this, oh, but there's queen a4. Oh, but maybe I have, but you have to be like, you have to try to stay, you have to try to stay objective, of course. Um, and during the game, it can be even, even harder. Uh, cause yeah, look at the position. White is up three pawns. And, and so the you know, game, game is kind of over. White is completely winning. It's very, very easy to just kind of play like rook takes c7, expect your opponent's resignation, and then that's uh, that's it. But 
Yeah, so, so easy. Actually, uh, Lennerman just did a perfect lecture for you guys, and it's never too late uh, to lose. I think this is exactly <laughs> the right the right topic. So yeah, queen b7, only move for white, and white is uh, now completely winning still. Tons of material and lots of pressure, and ideas like b5, b6, and yeah, it's just game over. Okay, next one. Yeah, probably white's, white's not worse here. The question is, is white better, clearly better. Yeah, to result game. Yeah, definitely white has a, a serious advantage here. In fact, um, when we think about the isolated pawn, the fewer minor pieces that are on the board, generally the better it is for the side playing against the pawn. In fact, if the knights were traded off here, like white's, white's game here would be pretty simple. You put all your heavy pieces on the D file and and you try to play e4 somewhere and you take the pawn, essentially. Um, so definitely white has a very good version of things. There's also a little bit more mobilized here with the rooks uh, in the center. So white is definitely playing for uh, some advantage. Um, okay, so yeah, right move I thought was f4. There are different ways to play the position. Almost after every like normal move, h3 here, I mean, white has, I think, a very, very nice advantage. Um, in engine terms, it would be above plus one, which is kind of surprising. We haven't won the pawn yet, but okay, white is better. Um, I liked f4 to, I guess, get rid of black's queen in uh, the center. In case of queen e4, then this kind of endgame definitely felt very, very appealing, where our pieces are more active and uh, this pawn can be a serious weakness. Maybe even a move just like h3 here, knight d6, and white is doing really, really well. Uh, so black played queen e6, trying to stay active. Queen b8 feels a little bit too uh, too passive here. Uh, and now, okay, followed up with rook c6, as uh, a few of you guys suggested. Very, very nice move. Not just for the, the shock factor, but we do want to just double up on the c file and also maybe put pressure uh, on f6. Uh, now, at this point, black actually played queen e4, back, which I think it's probably the right decision, because now black doesn't have anything better than a uh, kind of a bad endgame. Queen d7 would be very, very risky here, but it is kind of interesting to see how white should um, continue here. So there's a couple of suggestions. Yeah, first thought was rook takes f6, gf, and then e4. Uh, but I'm not sure if this line was actually working, because black will go king h8, and then rook g8 if needed. So I, I'm not really sure if this one's so clear. Um, I also thought about e4. In fact, during the game, when I was calculating this position, I was, I was already done after e4. I was like, oh, e4 looks really strong. Um, but e4 doesn't actually work. Can someone figure out why it doesn't work? Right. Yeah, I thought e4 was very clever. So we're threatening so many things. e5 takes, and of course rook takes f6, followed by queen g3 is just mate. But yeah, just knight takes e4, queen takes e4, and now black accepts our blunder with queen takes e6. And the white is ending up down an exchange. Yeah, knight e7, and our queen is always hanging on e4. So that was actually my idea. Of course, if we got to this position, hopefully I would recheck things and realize, oops, I'm blundering with this move. Instead, better, uh, you guys suggested rook d6, but just securing the rook. Now black has to play either queen c7 here. Yeah, let's say queen c7. And uh, white has a very nice position here. Yeah, I like queen d4, exactly. Now threatening this one, threatening g4, threatening rook takes d5. Basically black is uh, just losing here. Knight takes g7, check. Knight h, knight, knight, not check. Knight takes g7, knight h6, check. And uh, and so on. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, not knight g7, because um, queen is here. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, completely winning for white. More, more than plus three. But okay, the engine engine is pretty strong. Um, okay, in the game, 
after queen e4, um, or sorry, after queen e6, rook c6, queen e4, takes, takes. Um, I actually made a mistake. I, I misplayed this endgame pretty badly. I played this move rook c7, which felt kind of natural, like going after the 7th rank and um, making it harder for black to, to play rook d8. Um, but what, what's the problem with this move? Can anyone can anyone try to figure out why is rook c7 maybe not the best way for white to uh, to play here? So knight g4, I'm just going to go h3 as white, yeah? And force black back. Yeah, exactly, g6. We've allowed black to play g6. With a rook on c6, this was not possible. This is like anti-prophylaxis, allowing your opponent an idea that they didn't have uh, before. Um, and uh, now after g6, black is doing much better because white's knight doesn't have a great square. And now if I'm not careful, there's, for example, knight d4, knight d5 is a problem. Knight g4 might be a bigger problem. And simply put, I can't keep my strong knight on f5 and already white has lost a huge chunk of, of the advantage. Um, so anything like h3 would have been far better, and white is um, king f2 also fine, uh, totally fine, I think, and white would have a big advantage. Okay, still some work to do to, to win the game. Uh, anyway, let's go to the next one. All right, guys, go ahead and submit your answers if you haven't already. Now, this one's kind of a tough one, but you we really have to think about what black wants to do on their next move. Of course, they want to take our bishop, but if we move the bishop somewhere normal, we have to kind of think about what black would like to do on their next move. Like bishop e3 feels like a you know perfectly fine move. Bishop g3, the bishop looks fine there. Bishop e5. Uh, but on all these moves, what exactly is black going to be doing? Very, very important question. Yeah, bishop e6 is black's next move. That's kind of annoying. So bishop e5, bishop e6. And then, of course, rook c8, right? So because this one is kind of coming with tempo, it means we have to be very, very quick here as white. Yeah, so that means bishop, uh, bishop d6. Um, yeah, question, won't white have, like, bishop e6, knight d6 ideas? I'm not sure, I mean, but it, it feels, it, it will be a lot to calculate. For one, like, there'll be bishop takes b3, bishop takes a2, or maybe the queen can move somewhere, and our queen is still under attack. So it's very, very uh, risky. We have to be, we have to be careful with that. So bishop d6, actually very important move, hitting the rook with tempo, not giving black time for bishop e6, because this also gives white a tempo for knight e3. Yeah, so bishop d6 is important, and then if black goes like rook d8 or something, then white has time for knight e3, uh, conveniently defending the g2 pawn, but also on queen g6 we just have uh, bishop g3 anyway, for example. And uh, and if white can get the knight to e3, then white's setup is, is perfectly fine, the knight is really, really well placed there. We can maybe start pushing our pawn, c4, d5, and uh, and okay, now our position is is quite all right. Black isn't getting this very, very annoying counterplay. So in the game, rook e8 was played. Uh, knight e3, queen g6. I'll just take you guys to the next uh, moment here. Bishop g3, b6, castles. There was, of course, other options here for black. But in this position, black goes bishop e6. And uh, once again, guys, it's very important to ask what exactly does black want after this move. Uh, let me give you some time to think about it and then come up with White's response. Uh, so three minutes here. Yeah, definitely don't <laughs> give me any an one move answers right away. I want you guys to think about it because of course White has two moves here essentially. Of course, we can move the queen, but actually let me make it simpler for you guys. We can either play d5 or we can play c4. We really want to play both of these moves. We want to get our pawns rolling. The question is which one of these moves 
should we do uh, right now? And I think to order, in order to answer this one effectively, you really need to understand what is black going to be playing for? Why are they playing bishop e6? Okay, guys. So, key question here. Let's start with this one. Uh, why did black play bishop e6? I mean, if we can just, like, get a free tempo with d5, what, like, what's the point of this one, right? Um, I should actually no, uh, tell you guys, this was my game against Grandmaster uh, Seviano, who's, of course, a very, very strong player. But even if your opponent is not a GM, you should generally expect that they have some idea behind their move. And they're not just, uh, you know, losing a tempo for, for no reason. Um, so, yeah, what is what is Black up to? Why, do, why are they trying, seemingly trying to provoke the pawn to d5 to then play bishop to d7? What is their supposed follow-up? Okay, suggestion to um, to push b5, but okay, white is going to follow up with, with c4, yeah, after d5. So b5 won't be, won't be possible. Yeah, but this question is really about counterplay. Counterplay that black doesn't have in this position. Um, but if we get bishop e6, d5, bishop d7 on the board, now black is threatening to, uh, well, move the knight and push the f-pawn, uh, which is actually a very, very annoying plan. Knight h5 hitting the bishop will have to move, then f5, of course, the point is that this pawn is no longer pinned. This is why black is trying to provoke d5. And then the pawn is running f5 and f4 to harass our good knight on e3 as well. And then play on the light squares, maybe e3, maybe f3. But essentially a pretty annoying kingside attack. So c4 is uh, kind of a better start here. Because here also black can go knight h5, um, but after uh, white moves the bishop here, or excuse me, king h2, f5. Well, the difference is we have this e5 square for the bishop, so white can play bishop e5 here. And now it's a completely different different picture because our bishop is not kind of trapped in on h2. It's a lot more active on e5. And now after black plays f4, where is white going with the knight here? Hmm, hopefully not not passive if we can if we can avoid it. Yeah. I was thinking about knight g4, but I'm not sure it's really it's really worth it when, yeah, we just have knight d5. And now, but I did consider this one as well, like takes, takes, and uh, queen h3, actually, exactly the line Eric just gave. And I actually thought it's kind of an interesting position, like we're down a pawn, but bishop on e5 is very strong, and, you know, knight on h5 is quite awkward having to defend this pawn now. I wasn't sure, I thought it might be interesting for white, but, okay, with knight d5, we don't have to give up a pawn, we're threatening knight c7, as well as this pawn, uh, but okay, knight c7, much more serious threat. And uh, of course, we're very much okay with bishop takes d5, c takes d5, where the position is like completely transformed compared to a couple moves ago. But yeah, if we just evaluate afresh, our bishop on e5 is very strong. We have a rook coming to the c file. We have d6 uh, at any point opening up our queen. So the d pawn is very strong. Uh, and black's counterplay on the king side actually is not not that scary anymore, right? There's actually very few pieces, and in fact, this knight on h5 doesn't seem like a dangerous dangerous piece um, at all. Uh, so that was kind of the difference between these two moves, which is, I think, very, very hard to notice if um, we're not really thinking about, you know, the game from our opponent's shoes, which I think is very, very important. Because um, it's easy to just play d5 with tempo, and definitely a, that was the first instinct here. But uh, again, the difference in this position, let's say we played c4, black would go knight h5, king h2, f5, and this is now 
completely different story. Where we don't have bishop e5, we don't have knight d5, and here our pieces are just uh, just going backwards. And, and black is getting quite decent counterplay. Uh, so really, really important moment actually, because this one really like just facilitates all of black's play uh, in the in the position. Whereas after c4, white is just getting a clear advantage. Um, in fact, I think black's best move here is just like rook c8, not to go for this plan at all. But but this is chess, right? Chess is a game played between two humans, and it's very important to think about what the human on the other side of the board is trying to do, right? They're trying to win the game. They're going to have certain certain ideas. Um, so after knight h5, king h2, f5, bishop e5, f4, knight d5, uh, black played f3. This move is actually not that dangerous. In fact, white can take here and, and definitely uh, get away with it. I decided to play rook g1, which is also totally fine. And yeah, black's attack here just isn't, isn't actually going anywhere. It doesn't have enough, uh, enough legs. Um, white is still threatening knight c7, rook c3 uh, is also a move white can throw in just to kind of cover the third rank, and yeah, eventually black's attack uh, is just kind of running out. Uh, okay, so um, I ended up winning this one, and uh, I actually had a couple more games or moments I wanted to, uh, to show you guys, but I think we're uh, pretty much out of time here. Um, so I think we will, uh, then wrap it up. Cause yeah, next one, I think will will just take us way, way over, but, uh, yeah, maybe we'll do another class with, uh, some more moments from this tournament. Although you could honestly take any tournament and, uh, I think find a bunch of instructive moments. Um, To, uh, to learn from. Uh, all right, guys. Well, that'll wrap it up. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out. Let me open up the chat. And yeah, let me uh, actually just double check here. So yeah, guys, reminder, next class is going to be on Monday again with, uh, with Sam at the usual time. And uh, we're just going to be doing Mondays from, from now on, so Mondays and Thursdays. All right, y'all. Have a good one.